Today we're talking about Brexit, because, well, it just happened. I know, right? I thought there was going to be some sort of tear in our reality or economic catastrophe. Turns out they just quietly slipped out of the European Union. As the New York Times reports, it's done. At last. The European Union gave its final formal approval to Brexit on Thursday, clearing the way for Britain to reverse 47 years of integration with the continent and leave the bloc on Friday night. That's right, I no longer have to come up with these darn Brexit puns anymore. I was really running on fumes. Untied Kingdom? Come on, Stephen. Hey, at least you know this show recycles. One major issue that has come up now that Brexit is over is, what now? Hey Boris Johnson, I wouldn't hold my breath for a fruit basket from your new neighbors. Now that you're gone, it's time to take on a new task, negotiating trade deals with every group you can, including the European Union, which, awkward. So let's get into it. Now, trade is an interesting issue for Brexit because, as a member of the European Union, Britain couldn't negotiate a separate trade agreement just for themselves. That would be like if your Uber driver pulled up and then tried to negotiate a separate fare with you. The app says it's 20 bucks. Yeah, but if you want to do business with this car, that's going to be an extra 3 bucks. This means that because they're leaving the European Union, they're starting from scratch on the trade front. They have deals with nobody. As Boris Johnson's office said Friday, from tomorrow the UK will be free to begin trade negotiations with countries around the world. So let's get to looking at some of those trade negotiations now, starting with the big one. With one set of talks done, another will begin, as the EU and UK negotiate what post-Brexit trade will look like. Britain wants a tariff-free, quota-free deal. Oh. Man, I better start brainstorming new puns again, huh? There are a few sticking points in this trade negotiation, but the overall theme seems to be Britain wanting to move on with their life as an independent country, while the European Union is saying, alright, we get it, you're not with us anymore, but it would just be so much cheaper and more efficient if we kept sharing our Amazon Prime account, HBO Go account, and Netflix passwords. Although instead of HBO Go and Netflix, we're talking the European Union insisting on a level playing field, meaning that it wants the UK to stick to the same rules on tax, state aid, workers' rights, and environmental protections as it did when it was a member. Of course, this is not exactly the ideal solution for Britain, as it would make the entire idea of brexiting about as impactful as moving out of your childhood home into your parents' garage, because you're now an independent man and make your own rules. The UK doesn't want to continue these regulations, as the whole point of leaving the EU in the first place was to break away from the dictate of Brussels. So, is the European Union just being spiteful by wanting all these controls over the UK workers regulations and environmental standards? I mean, they don't show up in any other agreements that the EU has. I'm sure there's a little bit of that, but there's also a good reason. The UK is really, really close to the EU, and if they started undercutting Europe on labor costs or environmental standards, well, they could quickly become the China of Europe. Also, have you seen European labor standards? A five day work week with no nap time would look like a forced labor camp to them. Europe's ready to give the UK a free trade deal without tariffs and quotas, and one that's at least as comprehensive as its agreement with Canada. But Britain's size and proximity means the bloc wants greater safeguards than in previous agreements. Now that's the main point of contention, but there's one other, way more specific point of contention that needs to be resolved as well. Under the European Union's common fisheries policy, all European fishing fleets have equal access to EU waters. It's something that's become a battle line in Brexit. Britain's fishing industry in general has long supported Brexit, with voices demanding the UK takes back control of its waters. Now that probably sounds like the smallest of whoops, but it's super contentious issue for European fisheries. So much that, despite the fact that everyone's given Brexit the thumbs up at this point, they kicked the fishing fight to June. 
Now there are two seemingly unrelated bargaining chips in play here, whose decisions have both been kicked down to June in a sort of jurisdictional hostage negotiation. The UK wants to take back control of its waters, but knows France and Spain are desperate to go on fishing them. The EU thinks Britain wants its financial services industry to have as extensive a level of access to a single market as possible. So in a few months, we're going to see some sort of trade agreement addressing these points of contention. But that's not even close to the end of this whole trade negotiation story, because apparently Britain wants to trade with other countries as well. A major new free trade deal with the US. This was held up by Brexiteers as one of the great prizes for Britain that would come from leaving the European Union. God, I sure hope you guys really, really, really want some soybeans. Might be an improvement on boiled fish though. And speaking of soybeans, a major and slightly offensive point of contention in this trade negotiation is that the United States is trying to sell Britain more food. One problem. Environmental issues, the fact that you can use 80 pesticides in the US you can't use in Europe, that you don't have any labels for GM food, that you can add growth hormones to feed. So all those environmental and health issues immediately come to the fore. And the American side have been very clear that agricultural access, comprehensive agricultural access, is a key priority. So if we can't solve that one, then we're not going to get very far. What, you think you're better than us? Turns out America does a lot of stuff with our food that's illegal in Britain. So Britain either has to change the regulation so they can legally import our chlorinated chicken stuffed with pesticides and hormones, which are delicious by the way, or make that the hill they die on in an American trade negotiation. That's not the only sticking point in this negotiation either. Although that should not really come as a surprise to anybody when you consider that America has recently threatened them with large tariffs on their automobiles in response to a proposed tax on tech companies. What can I say, we finally found a way to make Jaguars even more overpriced. Looks great while you're waiting for AAA. Now this is not exactly a great environment for a free trade agreement. At the same time, America is demanding that any trade deal allow for full market access for United States pharmaceutical products and medical devices. That would require changes to Britain's National Health Service pricing restrictions and could increase the cost of drugs in Britain. You know, so we can help all those manufacturing jobs in the Midwest. Now, there's of course also a recent issue that Trump is still pretty sore about regarding the Huawei decision that Boris Johnson recently made. US President Donald Trump has lobbied hard to have the Chinese company banned in the UK in its entirety, claiming it will use the equipment as a spying tool. The final decision for the British government then a balancing act. Go ahead with Huawei and it could possibly damage hopes of a lucrative trade deal when the UK departs the European Union at the end of the month. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry, Britain. Trump isn't one to take things personally. He might be lucky, though. He may not be good at forgiving, but he is very good at forgetting. If you're wondering what Britain wants out of a trade deal, it seems like the answer is just as little of the things I just mentioned as possible. It seems as though everybody in Britain thought this was going to be a pretty easy trade deal to score, but then America just dumped a binder of demands on their desk and said, hey, figure it out. You need this a lot more than we do. It really does make clear it's about America first. It's about mercantilism. It's about what is good for the US rather than how do we reach a mutually beneficial outcome. What we see in this document is that US trade policy, as it has ever been, is about looking out for US interests and it's not about being nice to other countries, however deep our friendship is. They called expecting coalition of the willing America, but ended up getting revolutionary war America instead. So this trade negotiation is probably going to be pretty long and drawn out as well. Outside of America and the European Union, Britain's goal seems to largely be, eh, the UK trade deals were good enough. For Britain, the name of the game in vast swaths of the world is continuity deals. Britain recently hosted an African summit to get leaders from that continent to sign deals. They keep in place the same conditions that already exist between the UK and African countries under EU deals. 
Worldwide, the UK has in place about 40 such continuity deals, covering some 70 countries. Turns out, not everything the EU has put into place is so bad. Let's just copy a few of those details. Long term, Boris Johnson wants 80% of British trade to be covered by free trade agreements in the next three years. And best of luck with that Britain, but with the WTO in disarray and a climate of tariffs and trade wars, it feels like you couldn't have picked a worse time to be a fresh face in the trade negotiation with no major existing trade agreements. I look forward to seeing what comes next with you guys, but until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.